Hi, welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. Today we're going to be using the slingshot bands that I normally carry to fabricate another hunting tool, and that's going to be the Hawaiian sling. So a Hawaiian sling is traditionally used for spear fishing, but I can see using it in my environment for panfish, frogs, and other small game around the water's edge. Alright, so to get started, this originally was going to be a cane pole, and it kept splitting out on me. So I'm going to try to make a saw cut right at this node. Alright, so I got a solid tube out of it. Uh, it's fairly strong. This is a little dry, but it's okay. I'm going to go ahead and camp at the end of this to make it better for me to work with. It's going to make it stronger. And I'm going to actually attach my slingshot tubes to this so you don't want any sharp edges that could catch the band. Alright, so now that I have my tube, I'm going to be looking for darts to use. So I'm going to look for saplings that's going to be fitting inside the diameter of this tube. Uh, they have to be straight. I mean, I can heat straighten them a little bit. Uh, as far as length, this is not a frog gig, so I don't need something eight feet long. I'm looking for something in the five foot range, so five to six feet should be plenty. Uh, this is going to be a, a handheld uh, spear thrower, for lack of better words. So I'm going to have my full arm extension available to me, and I can get relatively close to the fish or game before I release the dart. So I've got several here. This is a nice straight green branch. So I was able to find a few darts for the Hawaiian sling. This is really nothing to write home about. This is kind of uh, kind of crooked, kind of short, but I think I can make it work. So this was where the, the bad hook end was. The other end, same thing, got a little hook right at the very end. I tried to be a little generous on the swing. I would rather trim this up later than overcut and lose, uh, lose some of the dart. Alright, so you can see this is crooked, but because this is green, I can straighten this up pretty easy. I could make it just as straight as possible, and by the time I use it, you know it's going to bend again. So this is pretty flexible stuff. So it does have to fit through here, it does have to ride through here. There's a couple of knots on the very end of it. So I'm going to take care of those now. So that's a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and skin this too. 
So most of the big knots are off right now, and right now I'm just taking the bark off the, the straight part of the shaft, so I'm able to use the 90 degree spine. Let me get rid of this bark pretty quickly. took the bark off no problem took all the knots off and you can see the flexibility of the shaft so I'm going to be able to continually tune this until it's completely dry now unlike an arrow I'm not really worried about a notch on this end so I'm just going to give myself a blunt end basically So just a nice smooth end, nothing big here. Now on this end, there's a lot of different options I could do. Originally, I was thinking about splitting this similar to a frog gig to give me an open, um, an open pronged end similar to like a paralyzer uh, spear fishing dart. I thought I'd have a little bit more uh, area with that, but I don't think I'm gonna do that with the shaft because I just don't think it's strong enough. I can do that with a natural frog gig uh, because I'm picking something you know, close to an inch, inch and a quarter in diameter. But this little thing here just is not gonna happen, I don't believe. Uh, for right now, I'm just gonna give myself a point. Um, theory being, I'm just gonna try to pin the fish right into the mud. I think I'm going to have to fabricate some kind of point for this and then notch it similar to an arrow. And then I would actually have a line attached to the point. So some type of barbed point. You know, I could do stone, glass, bone, something like that. I haven't quite got it figured out yet. So to give myself more options, I'm just going to give myself a dull point for right now. Not going to really take a lot of meat off of this thing. Now one thing I did forget to mention, you know, this is the small end of the tree. This was the base of the tree. So this thing's going backwards, just like an arrow. This is going to be small end is going to be in the pouch. Uh, big end is going to be into the game or into the fish. So it uh, gives me a little more strength and then it should give me more flex to help it straighten itself out over a short distance. All right, so right now I've got the body of the Hawaiian sling and then I've got my dart for the Hawaiian sling. All passes through now nice and neat. Now for uh, propulsion of this, we're gonna be using a slingshot band. This is a tubular band. I've used flat bands in other videos. Uh, tubular bands are way stronger. So something like this where the band is gonna be in direct contact with you know wood and all kinds of uh, natural materials and unnatural positions with sharpened edges and things. Uh, I prefer to go with a tube just because it lasts longer. So this slingshot band I've got set up to be a little more multi-purpose. I've got paracord running into the tube held on with a constrictor knot. I'll show you how I get that set up. It's a little tricky, but once you get the hang of it, you know, it's not too bad. But this is going to give me a solid purchase to tie uh, the rubber to the, to the uh, piece of river cane. So I'm going to set up just a bowline on each end, get them matched up here. That's pretty even. All right, so I'm going to be using bank line. I'm going to take a couple pulls off my roll. I 
going to be starting this with a, a bowl in also. Alright, so I've got my bowl in and my double arm pull of bank line. I'm going to run it through both paracord loops on the band. And then run my bank line through my loop. And capture it on the uh, river cane. Okay, right now I'm just going to go ahead and wind this up. So I'm keeping a lot of tension on this, but I'm not getting silly with it. You know, I don't have a toggle involved. I don't really think it's needed. You could crush this river cane because it's this is old dry stuff. I don't want to get too crazy. Alright, so right now you see I've got this wrapped all the way down. It's nice and tight, and I have maybe 18 inches or so. So what I'm going to do is create a loop. I'll show you I did that again. Coming up through, and then just creating a loop. Now the tag end is going to go through the loop. And that's going to help me lock it down. Then I can put a couple half hitches around the paracord. So the Hawaiian sling's all done. The uh, key thing to look at here is my paracord and the bands themselves are 180 degrees from each other. So I have one at you know, 12 o'clock, one at 6 o'clock. So to load this up, I've got the pointy end, and again this is green. This is going to need constant attention until it dries out as far as straightening it. So I'm going to load it small in first. It goes right into the pouch. And then you can load it and hold it with your hand. So Right now I'm carrying around a loaded uh, set of bands. So if I get up to a fish, if I get up to whatever type of game I was after, I open my hand and it launches the dart. So like I said before, I was after darts that were a little bit longer than this. This just happened to be what I found easily. So longer darts, I can you know load it, hold it, get it into the water so I can get the tip of the dart into the water close to the fish or close to the frog and then I don't have that refraction how the light makes the target look like it's a different uh, a distance than what it actually is so there's a you know huge tendency to shoot over stuff when the dart is actually in the water the dart will look bent so that gets rid of that refraction entirely alright so what piqued my interest in the Hawaiian sling is not so much spear fishing it's the fact that what I'm basically doing is making a sling bow without first manufacturing a slingshot and then turning the slingshot into a sling bow. So this saves me a lot of time and trouble if all I'm trying to do is launch an arrow you know, with a set of rubber bands. So the biggest disadvantage of using this as a sling bow is going to be the lack of fletching on the arrows. That's why I call them darts, not arrows. Uh, you can try to fletch if you had a longer or a larger diameter tube. You're going to strip your uh, fletchings off really quick. But in a situation like this, you're only looking at gaining, you know, maybe a few yards in your distance. So anything under 10 yards, if I can stick an arrow in it with a homemade broadhead, I have a lot better chance of getting medium-sized game like uh, skunk, possum, raccoon, groundhog with a uh, homemade arrow rather than bouncing a rock off its head. Alright, so for the weight for what you're getting with it, 
a slingshot bands are definitely worth carrying. This is just another use for them. This is the Hawaiian sling. This has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bush Craft. See you next time.